By the end of this video, we're going to be able to flash an LED by sending an email. So to proceed, you'll need to have subscribed to the services that we talked about in the previous video. And this is how they're all going to connect together. Our Gmail account is going to be linked with IFTTT. That's going to be linked with the Particle Cloud. And the Particle Cloud is going to publish events to our Raspberry Pi, which is also running a piece of Particle software called the Particle Agent. And when it receives this um, event, it'll change the LED state depending on the event type. So what's going to happen is we're going to receive some email and we're going to look at the subject. What we're going to do is we're going to change the LED state based off the contents of that subject. So we'll look for the content LED dash on and LED dash off all in lowercase. So this is going to be our control signal, basically. Gmail is linked with IFTTT. So IFT is going to look at the subject of that email and decide what to do about the contents. If the contents matches either of these, then IFT is going to publish a particle cloud event, which will get pushed to our Raspberry Pi. Let's get started. Over on the Pi, I have the Beginner's Workshop open in my browser and I have a terminal session on the right. So what I'm going to do is grab the step, set up the particle agent on your Pi. I'm just going to grab the command that's shown there and just paste it straight in and execute that. Okay, we're in the future now. That's finished downloading and installing. I need to now enter my credentials for my Particle account. So these will be the ones that you use to sign up for the Particle Cloud. So I'm going to use internet of call at gmail.com. It just so happens that I'm using the same email address both for my account and also doing these actions like turning the LED on and off. You don't have to use the same one. I just am because it's quite convenient. Okay, so the Raspberry Pi is logging into Particle, and now we have the opportunity to give our Raspberry Pi a name. And this is just a helpful reference. So I'm gonna name it after the model of Pi that I'm using, which is a model, which is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. So I'm gonna call it Pi 3B. That'll just help down the track to distinguish different devices. Okay, so something quite important has happened. We've registered our Pi to the Particle Cloud. So I'm just going to minimize that and stretch this out a bit. So we can see that our Raspberry Pi is currently running a Particle app and that's called Tinker. That's quite important. You can, you can play with Tinker um, by downloading a mobile application, but today we'll just press on with the project. A uh, quite important point is if you ever want to roll back the particle agent on your Raspberry Pi to factory defaults, you can always enter the command particle agent setup. And that will roll it back to when we had to sign in with our particle account and name our Pi. So that's like a factory reset almost. And that's all we need to do on the Raspberry Pi for this video. I've already set up my Pi with the schematic that you can find in the resources for this video. And it's just another basic resistor LED circuit that we're used to building. So over on the computer, this is where we're, we're going to program our Raspberry Pi. We need to go over to particle, uh, build.particle.io. And this is going to open our online programming development environment. While that's opening, I'll also open up if this then that, and I'll open my Gmail account as well. So back over on Particle, this is the Particle uh, IDE. This is where we're gonna program our Raspberry Pi. So you can see at the moment, we have a few example apps, and we have a what's called an empty app. This is like an Arduino sketch. And down the bottom, you'll see a little heartbeat device connected uh, indicator, and there is our Pi 3B. So our particle agent is running on our Raspberry Pi, 
it's connected to our account. And that means that once we log into build.particle.io, there it is, it's connected and it's ready to go. So we're gonna be programming our Raspberry Pi with, from within our web browser. That means we could do this from anywhere in the world. I'm gonna quickly grab the example code for this section. So I'll go over to the workshop and find myself down at the Particle app. So I'm just gonna grab this code and copy it straight in. Okay, that all looks okay. I'm gonna give it a title. I'm gonna call this email to LED. That seems reasonable. And the one thing that we have to change with this app is that we need a unique event name. This is a public event, so this needs to be something that's unique. This is like the, the key that's gonna turn on or off our LED. So anyone publishing to this event with the correct data will be able to do that. I'm gonna make it something long, like Michael's email is received now, and then just a bunch of random numbers. I'm just gonna double click on that and copy it because I'm gonna need it quite soon. And I think everything else is okay. So here's, here's for a magic moment, right? We're going to save this email to LED. That's just with that folder button save. And now you can see that under my apps, we have the app we've just created. Uh, below there are the example apps. By clicking this flash button and looking at this status down here, we can see that we're programming our Raspberry Pi from a web browser. This could be anywhere in the world. Okay, and the flash is successful. Device is being updated. Okay, so the device is ready. We've programmed our Raspberry Pi. It's now sitting and waiting patiently for these events. So let's give it some. Over on IFTTT, I'm already logged in, so I'm gonna click on my username and I'll just click new applet. You can see this is the environment where we create IFTTT applets. It's really straightforward. It's if this, then that. And you can see that the this is highlighted. So I'm gonna click that. And these are all the services that IFT can link with. Gmail's down here, but if you just wanna search for a service, it's as easy as that. We can select our Gmail. So we're choosing the trigger for our if this, this is the trigger. Now I've got a few options here. What I'm going to do is choose new email in inbox from search because this gives us quite a lot of options to work with. It's quite a powerful um, trigger. So what are we going to do? This trigger fires every time a new email arrives in your inbox that matches the search query you specify. So I'm going to just click through this search operators to find out a little bit more. Remember, we're searching for something in the subject field. So once we've clicked through and we can have a look at these examples, I want to look for something in the subject field. So I can say subject and then the subject. So I'm gonna grab that. Oh no, I've already copied my key. I'll have to type it out. So I'll search for subject LED on. Now remember, we want to trigger an event based off LED on, but also a subject LED off. So we need to figure out how to do that. We can go back to the syntax page and we can say messages that match multiple terms. So this is like an or statement and we can use the word or, or we can wrap our trigger in these curly braces, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to subject LED on and subject LED off. And then I'm gonna wrap that whole thing in some curly braces. And that's our trigger. So we can see now the, the trigger is populated with the Gmail logo. So now we can choose our action. And our action is a particle action. So I'm just gonna search for particle and there it is. And this is where we're going to publish our event. So I'm gonna choose that as the action. And this, this looks a little more complicated, but let's just go through it slowly then publish event name. So the event name that we're working with for this 
is Michael's email is received now 314159. So I've already copied that into my into my clipboard. So I'm just going to paste that. That way I won't make any typos. This, this event includes data. So the data is the thing that's going to be passed to our Raspberry Pi. And we do want to pass the subject. The subject is LED on and LED off. So that's what we want. And I'll just leave this as public to make things a little straightforward. So we can create that action. And yes, we can finish that. So that is everything we need to do to get our email to get our email to LED functionality working. So let's give it a road test. Over on Gmail, I'm already logged in, so I'm just going to go to compose and I'm going to email myself with the subject LED dash on. And now I'm going to press send. Now, IFT services can take several minutes to actually come through. So while you're debugging, you can go back to IFT where you've created your app and you can just click check now. And that does a manual update just to check. And you can see that after clicking that, my LED has come on. So how did this actually work? What was this LED on, LED off business? Well, back in the particle script, we can look at how events are handled. This particle.subscribe is something that runs on the particle agent and it subscribes the particle to an event. Okay, that's fair enough. The event has a name and whenever that name event is triggered, it triggers this my handler. Well, my handler is down here. We can see void my handler. So my handler is just a function that we write that takes in the event name and some data. So you'll remember that IFT was able to publish the subject as the data. So the data that's coming into this function is the data from the subject field. And we're comparing against LED off and LED on. And that's just toggling the LED. So just to close the loop on everything, I can go back to compose. I can email myself again with the subject LED dash off. Send that. And it hasn't happened yet, so I'll go over to IFT. I'll click check now, and we should momentarily see the LED go off, and indeed it does.